In a big night of breaking news, Julian Assange has been able to stay in the United Kingdom until at least May, that is when. The High Court will further consider his latest bid to try not to be extradited to the United States. Nigel Farage joins us now. Of course, our colleague from GB News. Yet again, a delay. Your thoughts? Yeah, I've met Julian Assange. I went to see him in the embassy a few years ago. Uh, I don't support everything that he did, but I do not want to see him extradited to the USA. Uh, I'm afraid my confidence in their judicial system right now is at an all-time low. So the fact that he's been given leave to appeal is, I think, a very good thing. It does seem, again, that there's these constant what we think is the last moment and then something happens and something happens and something happens. Um, what do you think the mood is uh, amongst the general populace here? Because he's a figure who has changed and, and uh, over the years about whether he was an anarchist or a journalist or a politician or a, all of these things. And understandably, mm. when you're faced with uh, going off to the United States after dumping their military secrets, you'll do anything to keep yourself out of jail. But do normal people think, OK, uh, uh, time served, that's it? I think normal people are confused by the whole thing. They're not sure what to believe or what to think. But, but... I do think in this country there is still very much a sense of fair play, you know? Uh, and, and the idea uh, that if he goes off to America, uh, you know, gets a trial that is frankly completely one-sided and then some ridiculous sentence like 200 years in prison. Now, I think most fair-minded people would say whatever he's done right, whatever he's done wrong, uh, we should be able to deal with it here in this country. And you know what? He's been stuck in Belmarsh. He's been stuck now for years in that high security prison. I mean, how much more punishment does he deserve? Let's talk about Donald Trump, of course, going from uh, having to pay half a billion dollars today for it now being dropped down, and he gets uh, another 10 days, I think, before it's $155 million. Uh, all of the circumstances around what this situation is to me seems utterly disproportionate, especially when you have to pay the fine despite the fact that you're appealing the case. That, again, is truly astonishing, you know, and I repeat the point about Julian Assange. Just look, just look at the way Letitia James has behaved. Elected, saying, I'm going to go after Donald Trump, a victimless crime, money borrowed from banks, paid back with interest. And the whole basis of this case is that places like Mar-a-Lago are valued at $18 million. Garbage. I mean, crikey, you couldn't buy the Century Hut at the front for $18 million. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is a nonsense. Good that the fine's been reduced. It's gone from being, it's, it's gone from being insane to obscene. Uh, it still is absolutely dreadful that he has to pay over this money. And as you say, you know, what is the point of an appeals process if you have to be punished first, even before you can appeal. Well, I mean, literally, we're talking about that in, on both sides of the pond right now. And then there's, of course, the, the lefty freak ad. No surprise that they all decided to go nuts because, look, basically, you know, they'd, uh, they'd love to see, uh, you know, a public flogging of the bloke. Here's what they said today. I don't even know if I care what the process is that these judges are arriving at. Whatever it is, it's flawed. I can tell you that much. I mean, D David put it well. It's this is a different process for, for for this person. We have decided that he gets his own private court of justice. He has a private plane. He has a he has private clubs that he lives in. You know, apparently, you know, he he basically fashioned himself his own private militia to try to take over the capital. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. It would not happen for anybody else. Anybody else, it would be like, sorry, buddy, you lost, pay up. For him, he gets his own set of rules. Yeah, because the New York justice system is so pro-Trump. I mean, look, it's absolutely farcical and comical, but, you know, we've talked before about Trump derangement syndrome. You know, he just drives some people so nuts uh, that they lose any sense of logic whatsoever. Uh, my answer to that really would be that nobody else would be in court in New York for, I repeat, a victimless so-called crime. Good man. Thank you, Nigel. I know there's a lot on and I do appreciate the uh, fast reactions to things. That's why you're one of the best in the business. We love you, mate.